Okay, so our purpose here today is we are going to be able to identify what they consider to be a well-designed experiment. So there are several variables that come into play there. Um, some of these right now we're going to show you no. Know, the treatment might kind of make sense. It's what you're trying to compare. It can be something, it can be a medicine that you give somebody, or it could be certain conditions that you put them under. We're going to look at several different examples of that today. Your response variable is the outcome that you're measuring. So, did the medicine work? Did it take less time to do something under these conditions versus these conditions? Uh, you should know what subjects are. Random assignments, that's a very important thing. You don't want to put it in any specific order or have any influence over how something was assigned. Uh, you've got your comparison or control group. Depending on the type of experiment, it could be called either one. Placebo, it's kind of like a trick, or you may hear it as a sugar pill a lot of times. If you're talking about a study with medicine, they will give this group the actual medicine, but then they can't just not give this group anything because clearly they're not giving them anything. So. Um, they give them a pill, it just doesn't have the medicine in it, and so there's something that we call the placebo effect, and the, the person receiving the placebo thinks that something's happening just because they're getting a pill, but it's not actually the treatment, so that's an actual thing. And then um, blindness is important. <clears throat> subject blind means that the subject doesn't know what they're getting. Uh, the evaluator blind means that the evaluator doesn't know what the patient is getting. And then double blind, neither one of them know what is being given in the experiment. Uh, and then lurking variables are very important. It could be an explanation uh, for why a certain result occurs, but it's not the actual explanation that the study was designed to test. So we'll look at some specific examples of this. So this first one we're gonna kinda of walk through ourselves and then I'm gonna let y'all look at some of the other scenarios. <clears throat> so this is a common science experiment that is trying to determine if mung bead seed, mung bean seeds, that are given a gentle zap in a microwave oven are more likely to sprout than mung bean seeds that are not zapped in the microwave. Um, so let's talk about the treatments and the response variables. So is anybody, can anybody tell me what the treatment is for these seeds? What's the treatment? What are we doing to it? We're zapping it in the microwave or we're not. Okay, so the treatment is microwave or not. The response variable, what are we trying to measure? What did they tell us in that first little sentence up there? What are we trying to measure? Yeah, are they going to sprout or not? The response variable is sprouting or not. Now we're going to get into whether we did a good job of designing the experiment or not. So this one guy, Carlos, zapped 10 seeds and 8 of them sprouted. Explain why Carlos should not conclude that mung bean seeds zapped in a microwave are more likely to sprout than if they had not been zapped. So what is Carlos missing here? Yeah, he, did, he zapped them all. He doesn't have that comparison or control group. <clears throat> so even though eight out of the ten uh, sprouted, he's missing a comparison group. Eight out of the ten may have sprouted otherwise. Or ten out of ten may have sprouted otherwise. So he's missing the comparison group. You have to have that element uh, or your conclusion is not valid. Okay, let's look at another scenario. Mia took 20 seeds. She picked out 10 that looked healthy and 
been zapped then, of the 10 that were zapped, eight sprouted. Of the 10 that were not zapped, three sprouted. Explain why Mia should not conclude that the ones that are zapped are more likely to sprout. What's wrong with her scenario? <laughs> she picked the healthy ones. Of course the healthy looking ones are more likely to sprout. So she is missing randomization. And this is a good example of uh, a lurking variable. Could be a lurking variable um, because she picked the healthy ones. So that could be the explanation for why they sprouted or why they did not sprout. Not the fact that they were zapped in the microwave or not. Um, it may have more to do with the fact that they were healthy beans or they were not healthy beans. Okay? Um, so that could be a lurking variable, but the important thing is that she it's not random. She purposefully picked the ones that she zapped. Okay, let's um, look at part D. For her experiment, Julia took four mung bean seeds, selected two at random to be zapped, and zapped those two. Both seeds that were zapped sprouted. The two seeds that were not zapped did not sprout. What seems to be wrong with her experiment? She got random. She asked the comparison group. So she got the two things that the, the uh, people before her were lacking. What do you think might be wrong with this one? Huh? Yeah, she made one. She only did four. That's not a very good number. Um, you're comparing two and two, so <clears throat> I'd say that she's lacking uh, numbers. She needs to do it on there. So with all of that being said, part E says try and design an experiment to determine if mung bean seeds are more likely to sprout if they are zapped in the microwave. So I want y'all to take a minute and move it says, in a typical experiment, two or more treatments are randomly assigned to an available group of people or animals or plants or objects. We call those subjects. Okay, so we already talked about that vocab word. The purpose of an experiment is to establish cause and effect. Does one treatment cause a different response than the other treatment? So we have three characteristics that a well-designed experiment must have. A well-designed experiment must have these three characteristics. Number one, random assignment. So we just talked about that in the last one. You have to randomly assign the treatments to the subjects. You can't pick, you know, this group of women to receive the treatment and this group of men doesn't receive the treatment. You've got to mix them up. You also have to have a sufficient number of subjects. We saw that pitfall with the third scenario. They didn't have enough. They only picked four. So you've got to make sure you have a sufficient number of subjects. Um, and there's not really like a baseline number for that. Okay, there's not, I, I can't say that 20 subjects is enough. It really depends on what you're trying to um, compare it to. If you're trying to make a conclusion about a big, huge population, then you probably need a bigger sample size. And then you have to have that comparison or control group. Uh, so a control group gets no treatment, a comparison group gets a different treatment. So that's the slight difference between those two. The control group gets no treatment, the comparison group gets a different treatment. So those are the three characteristics that we need. So we kind of already talked about this. Which characteristics were missing in problem number one? Which one was Carlos missing? Carlos was missing the comparison. Okay, we talked about that. He was missing the comparison group. How about Mia? What was she missing? Random assignments. And um, Julia was missing the sufficient number. I'm not sure why some people aren't writing anything down. Okay. 
Okay, we're not going to talk about part B there because uh, we didn't do the penny stacking experiment. Um, part C, what can go wrong if treatments are not assigned randomly to the subject? We've discussed a few things already, um, but you're, you're introducing the availability for more lurking variables. Okay, if, like I mentioned before, if you are giving a, a medicine to two groups of people, and you group all the women together and all the men together, well, maybe the medicine just works better in females than it does in males. So that's not what you're trying to measure, but that could be what comes up if you don't randomly assign those people. With the beans, if you don't randomly assign the beans, then this group may have been more likely to sprout than not, regardless of whether they actually got that treatment or not. Okay? All right. So that's what uh, this leads us into the lurking variables. So I want you all to read this scenario here on problem number six. 